Hey, we have been an MP, and two and a half years ago, we bought this sinking rotten ship, and we've built it from the ground up, or from the keel upwards, thanks to this amazing team of shipwrights. In today's episode, we're gonna be tackling a very difficult and important and challenging task, which is defining where we're gonna have our waterline. And not only that, but we're gonna also draw it on the boat already. As you might know, Yaba was built in a beach somewhere in the north of Brazil, in the most handmade way you can possibly think of. So there's not many blueprints that we can use to define this waterline. So join us today while we find our way around all the obstacles in turning this rotten once sinking ship into our floating home. And if you like the content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any episodes and it supports us loads. Before we can move over to many things like actually painting the boat or putting the through holes or the outlets of the bilge pumps, we need to define the waterline again. We want to use the same waterline as before and add about two centimeters to it just to be sure because we know the wood we use is a bit heavier. So unfortunately we have painted over the entire boat which means we don't have any reference from before. But we've been thinking loads and loads and loads about how to measure that. Height of the waterline. We know from the keel to the waterline was 1 meter 60. And we just wanted to cross reference. And what we've actually done, that was Toninho's idea, we moved over here. Here's our old rudder. And you can see the, where the stainless steel mount used to go and the waterline. So we went over here and measured the bottom of the keel up to and it is one meter 60, so that's gonna be a good reference. Next part of the plan is something I've seen on YouTube. I've been looking up how to draw a waterline straight as possible. The way we're gonna draw this waterline is we're gonna have some horizontal planks going really far out, really horizontal at one meter 60. What that's gonna do is we're gonna have one at the transom, one in the middle and one at the bow, and we're gonna have a really tight line all across it, or at least from the transom to the middle. You'll see what I mean in a bit. And what we're gonna have doing is we're gonna have it in a way that it's touching the boat, the line, is touching the boat in a certain point. And we're gonna move the line outwards at the transom and inwards halfway or at the bow. So there's always a little bit of line touching the boat uh, where we're gonna draw little pencil lines at the desired water line level. And then later we're gonna draw that line nice and straight and uh, make sure it stays for good. That's really complicatedly explained, but I'm gonna do my best to show you how it's done. Right now, we're just setting up all the planks and then uh, we should be good to go with that little rope. Try to show you what we have already. We've got one and two over here. We're gonna go board going across. Halfway, we've got one as well. One over here and one over there against the hull. And moving to the bow, we have got one over here and one over here. All we need to do now is decide the water line and make them as matching as possible. It's not allowed to be any curves. This has to be three planks going across these completely at the same level uh, to make it one meter 60 here. The advantage is we've got a lot of eyes in this shipyard that can help us because no matter how much you measure, having a few people look and say if it's out of, sh out of line is the best thing you can have. So we know that this is where we want the water line going in between these through nuts here, bolts, threaded bars, whatever they are. So I'm gonna measure the height from here to the keel and that's gonna be the height that we're gonna use everywhere else on this boat. Now the stressful bear is to come, which is getting it right. But anyway, we're not gonna to rush today. We can move it around as much as we want.
after it's done, that was easy to measure the height because we had the rudder to base on. However, now the keel is really far away from where we're gonna put the plank. We really gotta figure out however the wood we're gonna use or the plank we're gonna use to level is a lot lighter. So that should help as well. Let's see how this goes. We have officially got our first bit of water line. Super cool. Anyway, I'm not gonna let them hold this for longer. We have made a small decision so far. We're gonna wait, uh, print off some pictures or get some pictures on our phone and readjust because this is now a line at one meter 60, which is way too deep, let's say, because if we were to pull a line now from bow to aft, bow to stern, it would literally be under the cover board, which is way too deep or the line would be way too high. It's quite annoying because we know this is where the water line was before, crossing this stainless steel over here. And we just took the one meter 60 and brought it to the bow. So I think it used to be lower at the bow and higher at the stern. However, I want it completely straight just so it sails better. And then we just have the same draft everywhere, which makes sense. So we're gonna wait for pictures, have a look at where it was, and probably take off some centimeters. Lower both of these equally so that we can draw a new line or draw the first line correctly. It's been a long time that we've been working on these three horizontal planks to make the water line. So right now the water line is at 127 excluding the extra weight that we're going to put on the bottom. This took forever but that taking forever means we can now have an easy job of drawing the waterline. I'm very curious to see what it's going to look like with the waterline on it. It's straight. This is normal, I'm sorry. So now we're just planning, we're gonna start drawing the lines. We need one person there, one person there, so the fishing line can constantly be moved so it's as close to the hull as possible. Nice and tight, and then we can start drawing stripes. That's the plan. And then we'll tape it, paint it, seal it. I didn't have a smaller one. I've learned a lot about water lines. One main thing being they're very, very difficult to draw, especially on a lengthy boat. So what we were doing is we were drawing all these little dots, start about halfway to the bow, and then we said, ah, before we move on, let me just check some reference points that I've made. Like this is the height of the water line. That's the height and that's the height. And then we just checked on going aft and it kind of was deviating from the reference point that I made. The reference point being straight line from under the keel upwards, measure upwards and that's it. So we took everything down again because we just decided to start again measuring. I'm exhausted. Long story short, we're going to redo these three battens. Put one at the bow, that's 100% correct. One at the stern, that's 100% correct. And then add this middle one accordingly, hoping it reaches the reference point that I made. So, help me for tomorrow because today was hectic. And uh, that's life at the yard. Good old yard. Anyway, Donini was very helpful. Nico, Jilson, MP, Rafa. Yeah, tomorrow we'll get to it again. Fresh brains. Our brains aren't very fresh anymore. Hopefully today is the last time we need to work on this water line on uh, port side. Then we can copy it measurement wise to starboard. The main reference point we have for the water line is right here in the middle of the boat. 
because that is where the water line is the closest to the deck because at the back it slopes upwards and to the bow it slopes well the deck slopes upwards so there's more distance between the water and the deck so this is the point that we want to use as a reference so we're just gonna we put a little purple heart plank under there which is the straightest planks we have because they came straight from the mill uh, and we're gonna measure put a leveler on it which is gonna happen right now and measure the height from the bottom of the keel which is the top of that plank up to the reference point there where I would like the water line where we would like the water line when we have that measurement we're gonna put it at the bow and the stern uh, put the planks up across at the height and then connect the one in the middle to the exact same height that we can start putting the string across that probably didn't make sense I never make sense but that's the plan and I hope this is the last time we have to really start measuring the water line do it correctly slowly and successfully. Three purple heart planks that you can see there represent the level of the keel. They're up against the keel line, bottom of the keel, and level across here. This one and the one we put at the bow are the ones at the water line that we want. But now we're going to pull this string along. You can see Nico's doing it. And then we're going to measure the one in the middle. We are very happy with this job. We've gotten all three planks to like practically line up to the millimeter so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the string across and try this waterline striping again sheesh We've been going over this water line, or the dots for the water line, a lot, and we are very happy with how straight we got it. Of course, we're gonna straighten it out with either tape, stretching out a piece of tape, or with a batten. However, we decided to raise it by eight centimeters. Now it's 130, one meter 30 or 130 centimeters. And we want, I wanted to lift it by 10. However, it meant that the water line would be going on slightly in the top plank and we want to keep that top plank out of the water uh, based on pictures and everything it was always like that pictures of other schooners it's also like that so I think this top plank if anything should stay out of the water it would be nice to have the second plank slightly out of the water as well however we don't want to risk that now as we don't know how heavy the boat's going to be hopefully it will be out of the water but we don't want to risk that being our boat being slightly heavy and having not enough anti-fouling or having the water line painted too low on the dots that were just drawn on with the fishing line I'm gonna take a horizontal line across it get the eight centimeters vertically upwards and draw a line there on the hull to draw a new line and then we can connect those and see what it looks like it's best to have slightly too much anti-fouling uh, which way you see some boats with the water line showing or even a bit of anti-fouling then not enough because you don't want any of the PU paint, polyurethane paint, to be underwater or even close to the water because it'll all get green and yucky and everything will stick to it. We have raised it by eight centimeters now. It was funny as we were going further out, as the hull slopes more, the gap got bigger and bigger. Uh, I've seen many correct ways of now drawing the line. One of them being the a baton that you nail across and it kind of 
gives a very nice shape and you adjust as you're going along. However, we're going to try and avoid putting holes in the hole right now as we're quite late with this water line. So we're going to get a nice piece of masking tape and stretch it out and kind of keep it as long as possible, closing it against this top line that we just drew and see if we can get that line as straight as possible. Uh, if that doesn't work, we can always go to other things. So we're going to do our best with this tape now. I have no idea if it's going to look like trash or whatever, but we're gonna, let's see if we can give this a go. I'm so happy right now that this is a water line already. The trick we used is just with tape. It was a suggestion from Toninho and it worked really well. Even though we were planning on doing it with a baton, you just apply a bit of tape in one area and one person standing very far away with a lot of loose tape kind of looks down the side of the tape, making sure it's kind of following, kind of following the crosses because if you want it to connect each individual cross or marking that I made, it'll be zigzaggy. So you want to be able to take three, four, five of the markings you made, look down the side of your tape and kind of go through the middle of all of them. And that really makes sure the curves are nice. But yeah, this is super, super smooth. We can still make some corrections once we put the actual paint on for the painting. But for now, I'm gonna just get a thick marker pen or something and mark on top of the line just so that there's a permanent marking in it. And that will be painted on top of soon. Oh yeah, super chuffed about this. It looks cool. Now we just need to do the other side, which is a different technique, but it will be, I think, easier. That permanent mark has now gone across everything. Now me and Rafa, or Rafa and I, are now gonna measure from the bow to the mid, and then from the stern to the mid, and put a little stripe under the coverboard every 20 centimeters on this side and on the other side. And then we'll use some teamwork to bring this line to the other side, because we can't fit much in that forest over there. A line is drawn under the cover board every 20 centimeters. There are 110, 111 lines across the boat. And now we're gonna switch to the other side and do exactly the same. So we can use these lines with these numbers, copy the distance from these numbers down to the water line to the other side. Now all I've done is on here, I've written one to 47. I think number three is actually already above the blue line. So number three, we're gonna measure the distance from coverboard down to the blue tape and write that. I'm gonna do that all for the first 37 on this side and do the same aft. So this might take a while, but I think this is the most accurate way of doing it with a little space to work with on the other side. I had a little time out because making a new scaffolding, I completely crushed the old leveler. We got another one here, a little bit stronger. 
and I'm going to be here to assist with the water line. Ready? Yeah. If it's wrong, whose fault is it? Yours. Next. Next. 28, 36.3. I have tried to explain this before and I've probably explained it badly, so I'll keep it short. We drew the water line on the other side and now we brought it over to this side based on the distance of the water line where on the other side and the varnished piece of wood up there, the cover board, right? That was the easy part because we just left a load of crosses or little mark marks all over the place. However, MP, if you can do me a favor and lift the camera, you can see that all those crosses are a bit zigzaggy. That is because any millimeter that I change in the water, the water leveler, that's the Dutch word, uh, changes about a, a big amount on the hole. So no matter how well I held it, it was always gonna be a bit different. But that's why we have the tape. Worst thing we can do right now is literally connect all these dots because that would leave a crazy zigzaggy line. So the goal is to use our eyes now. So we kind of wanna group together as we're taping it, group together all these. So to be, I'll have it nice and tight here and I'll be holding it stretched out this tape about where I think it should be, which goes in the middle of all these little dots here. And a P will be applying pressure, gluing it in place to make sure it's nice and straight. This is still the first time that we're doing a water line, so it's probably as close as we can artisanally get, I guess, <laughs> to make it sound fancy, but it's still, yeah, I think the other side looked good. Let's go. This starboard side is proving to be a lot harder than the port side, mainly because we didn't use the string technique and the string is like level. And here it's just measurements and there's a lot more ups and downs. Also on the port side, you could just stand. Where am I here? You could stand really far away and have a look at the line from a distance. However, here you can't really stand. Well, I'm going to have to at some point far away and check it out. So. There's only a tiny, tiny bit to go here, except I ran out of tape. So I went to go and get some more. So I'm gonna just try and put this last bit on. I don't know, <laughs> maybe climb in a tree or something. I don't know how I'm gonna see it. Because you have to really see it. You have to be, eye, your eyes have to be at the level of the water line and see if any bits of it are sticking up or down and kind of keep your eye on it as you go towards it and mark it. Because MP is really busy with the engine right now because we want to get sailing or we, get, we want to get leaving now and our prop shaft is arriving soon and our, our propeller and everything. So I'm alone on this. I think we're almost there with this waterline. I can already see the back bit flip up a bit because that was where I was running out. I'll show you. I should have done this when we had the strings because I need two people for this. I can't see the water line on the port side till to draw it on the right and I don't have a measuring tape. And I even think the measuring tape won't work. So I'm gonna see if I can get a jules on to just tell me from the from behind where you are to draw that line straight because I had it with this water line. I can't wait to just paint it. After many days of testing, drawing, measuring, removing the drawing, putting tape, removing the tape, sulking because it's not working, reflecting on stuff, how it can be done better, we finally got ourselves a straight waterline. Looks funny from down here, looks really wrong. But if you're actually at the waterline, it's nice and straight. That's how it should be. But uh, 
Thanks everyone who was involved with this. It took a while, but it is correct now. Next step is to sand the Vince epoxy, which was the last layer we put on top, make it nice and smooth, to then apply the polyurethane primer and the polyurethane paint. Now very, very, very important is to not sand the line we just drew. So we're just gonna sand right above it by machine and the line itself by hand so that we can then start applying its final paint above the waterline. The anti-fouling will be on just before we launch, like anti-fouling launch, stuff like that. But uh, super happy it's on now. First waterline I've ever drawn, hopefully the last one. And uh, let's get painting, sanding. And thank you so much for supporting us this week, Carlo, Richard and John for supporting us through PayPal and Jens, Wiley, Dwayne and Joseph for smashing that super thanks button on YouTube. We really appreciate the support and see you guys all next week. Go, 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 go. Come, 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 come. Ah! Go, 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 go. What's this? Good boy. Good boy.